of inclusio, a historical method of his time. Peter is made central in this inclusio, which means is was the eyewitness material being etc. You can go into in depth look at this in Richard Balcon's book. <clears throat> so basically I've provided a simple a couple of simple arguments. Number one the Gospels are in the first century. This is seen by the 19,000 quotes of the early church fathers from the second century. And so cannot be denied. We've seen secondly that based on the research of people like um, Richard Bauch, this material, and that we have to respect the authors as being trustworthy. We also saw that the resurrection in a, a large variety of uh, religious literature, both from the first and second century, have a consistent story of a Jesus dying and rising, which points to a clear historical narrative that could not have been invented nor could have developed over time because there's so much cross-referencing of different historical documents, religious documents. So, it's a broad argument it's a broad argument that I'm bringing based on Balcom's book Jesus and the Eyewitnesses so here's some of my other thoughts in Mark chapter 14, verse 66 and 72, we know that the gospel is based on Peter's testimony. Why would Mark put in Peter's denial of Jesus if it did not happen? Also, why would Peter be a coward at the time of Jesus' death? So, Sorry, here's my conclusions of this evidence. We've given the depth of the evidence of the historical variety of the gospel, veracity that's an eyewitness. Now here's the conclusion of what, what that gives us, what that helps us on the table. In Mark chapter 14, 66, 72, as we know that the gospel is based on Peter's testimony, why would Mark put in Peter's denial of Jesus if it did not happen? From Balkan's work we know and from early tradition many other sources we could go into if we wanted to we know that the Gospel of Mark was written on the basis of Peter's testimony so as we know that why is it why is Mark put in the denial of Peter why put it in if it didn't happen it would or propaganda so it has a strong historical base also why would Peter be a coward at the time of Jesus death and be bold in preaching in Jerusalem if Dr. Pryor says that the myth of Jesus that he wrote from the dead started right at the beginning why go into Jerusalem and preach because you'd soon be found out to be a liar what changed Peter from being a coward to courageous? The account of Jesus' death has a ring of historical truth about it. In Mark chapter 16, 9, Mary Madeline, a woman 
of ill repute is the first to bear witness of Jesus. Why make a woman who has only half the testimony of a man in Jewish court, why make a woman the first witness of Jesus? In Mark, we learn that Jesus died on a cross in Mark 15, 25, 37. He was buried in the tomb by Joseph of Arimathea in Mark 15, 43. And he was seen in the resurrection by Mary Madeline. This resurrection is stated a bold resurrection of Jesus. What is interesting, these facts that we affirm are facts that the vast majority of scholars would agree with. They wouldn't disagree with that. They might not agree with the supernatural interpretation, but they would not disagree with the basic facts that Christ died, the tomb was empty, and the church preached a resurrected Christ. So our research and our study confirm are confirmed in what scholars already accept. It falls in line with the work done by E.P. Sanders. So if our historical source material is in the first century, if it's reliable and based on eyewitness accounts, if it fits the historical context and accords with the scholarship of more scholars, I conclude the following. The idea that the disciples were lying makes no sense with the facts that we know. Why lie? What would they gain in lying? What would they gain in doing that? They gain no money, no sex, no power. People who start new movements aim at those three things. The disciples were not aiming at any of those things. If you were lying, why would you invent that your Messiah died, was a criminal, that died as a criminal? How would that enhance what you were trying to do? People would have just seen it as silly, so why preach it? If they lied, the enemies could have produced the body of Jesus and that would have exposed them. And why again preach in Jerusalem your lies? They would have been exposed in no time. How come nobody, if they were lying, how come not one of them recanted? When the disciples of him said they saw the golden plate, some later on went on to recant. What about delusions? Maybe they had an illusion or a vision. Well, it goes against the historical fact that the early church disciples believed in a physical resurrection. If it was an illusion or a vision, why do they insist on a real resurrection? Why not just say they had a vision? Why teach it was a physical resurrection? If it was an illusion, how could they recover from their defeat? When Jesus died, the disciples were defeated. They were not in a psychological fit state to respond to any vision or anything. They were utterly defeated. They had been beaten by this. They were not in a fit state to have visions. They were or to have grief, illus illusions. As they were so disappointed, so lost, so shattered, they were in no mental state to, be, to induce any such phenomena. Then the other option is, Jesus could rise from the dead. It fits all the historical facts. 
It makes perfectly clear why Peter was a coward one minute and bold the next. It makes sense to put Mary as the first witness because she just was. It happened. It makes perfect sense the disciples Jesus rose from the dead as they were crushed by Jesus' death.